Hi guys, this is Nadia Hilker. I'm playing Magna on The Walking Dead, and you guys are listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and I'm sending you all my love. Bye! Hello, my name is Cassie McClincy. I play Lydia on The Walking Dead, and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Yeah! Hey there guys, I'm Callan McAuliffe and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, I'm Lindsley Register and I play Lara on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, this is Ross Marquand and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, survivors! Welcome to episode 149 of the Walking Dead Talk Through. I'm Kyle, and I'm LT, and I'm Brian. Yay! Yay! We're all here. We're all here. Yeah, for another another episode. Sweet. All right. Well, we will be covering the Walking Dead season 11, episode 21, titled Outpost 22. Uh, we did not get any uh, feedback from last week's episode, What's Been Lost. So let's go into this week's episode. And uh, this was written by James Barnes and was directed by Tawana, Tawania McKernan. And description from amcplus.com is separated from their children are survivors to track a military convoy to a mysterious destination. All right. Well, let's get into our ratings. LT, what did you rate this episode? Well, I gave this one an eight out of 10. Steve McQueen's or Paul Newman's. I'm not sure whether it's a great escape or a cool hand Luke. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, well, that was better than mine. I couldn't really quite think of anything clever. So I just said eight choo-choo trains. <laughs> Woo woo! <laughs> Brian, what did you give this episode? I'm going to give it an eight, and it's going to be it's going to be eight former rulers now in prison. All right. Well, um, all right. Well, then that takes us into our listeners' ratings, and our first one comes from Dieta from Detroit. She says. She gave it a 9 out of 10. The crew is almost back together again. Exclamation, exclamation. Yeah. And Glenn's from Toronto gives it a 9 out of 10. Ride with Daryl Dixon. Renee from Fairburn, she says, 6 out of 10. Negan understands now how it felt to be up under a dictator with... A little cry or tear. Cry face, yes. Yeah. It's a sad face. Sad. Uh, Mike from Asheville gave it a 7 out of 10. We the people. N- Ivan from Minnesota gives it a 6 out of 10. I've been working on the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kind of led to my choo-choo comment or rating. I just All like, the live long day. <laughs> couldn't think of anything else. I was like, hey, just read his comment. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone, for your rating. So that takes us into our awesome sauce. And we got a few, and the first one comes from Dieta from Detroit, and she gave her awesome sauce as watching Daryl, Carol, Maggie, Rosita, and Gabriel take down the Starship Troopers and save Connie. Yes, love the heart-pounding action in these episodes. Glenn Toronto says, I enjoyed the motorcycle chase with Daryl's fancy slide under the tree branch and clipping and catching the trooper. Ivan from Minnesota says, that beginning crash sequence and the brutal deaths Negan and Ezekiel talking out their feelings, seeing a Commonwealth soldier have remorse, and Father Gabe praying over his enemy. Mm-hmm. Yep, all good ones. Uh, Renee from Fairburn gives her awesome. A Zeke giving Negan the business was so awesome. I'm so happy The Walking Dead finally addressed all the bad things that Negan did and stopped trying to gloss it over. 
Yeah, that was it was pretty awesome that they had their little heart to heart. And I think it was actually uh this is I thought I saw something. This was the first like real like on screen pairing of those two that like they haven't had any scenes together like that. So this was the first one. Um Yeah. So that was awesome all in itself. Uh everything Zeke said needed to be addressed because Negan and the Saviors were, were awful. I understand he's on a redemption arc, but you cannot be healed until you admit you had or have a problem. I'm glad to that guard. I'm glad to that guard saying no one has a name because that also was something Negan did, telling people to say I'm Negan. And I'm glad too that they separated Negan from his wife, and he had the audacity to say to Zeke, "I'm going to have a kid." I roll, I roll, I roll. Sir Glenn was also going to be a father before you bashed his head in with a bat, and more than likely, Abram was going to be the father eventually. Uh, Rosita did become pregnant, so more than likely, if Abram, Abraham um, would have survived, that would have been his kid Rosita had, and not Sidix. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Negan definitely got a lot more, uh, you know, kind of realization <laughs> face you know well, all the damages w- he has done but would would she have had um abraham's kid or would have been uh um sasha because i mean he she was with she was with sasha or she was with abraham uh just before he died yeah, yeah. not uh not rosita they they broke up yeah, well, I mean, I, I guess that's we we just would we just don't know because you know, yeah, Sasha did end up dying, um, and then maybe well, they both either. died. No, I'm just saying that if Abraham was still alive, yeah, you know, Sasha, we don't we don't know because we don't know. Well, right, right. it just never happened, so <laughs> we can always speculate. Uh, all right, well, thank you so much, Renee. And Mike from Asheville says, Atmosphere. I like the fall setting and being back in the woods. So cozy. Negan and Zeke. That's a powerhouse couple to take control. Father Gabriel speaking with the trooper. It's always nice to see him be a father and pull from his own experience. Yep. Yep. Always yep, yep, good. yep. Um, that's like, I, I think I... I don't think I put it in my comments or not, or I guess I do, but it's just like, yeah, there's, they are definitely going for, like I've said before, just all these like nice little character moments between our people. And it's just so good to see like some great acting's happening in front of us. And it's just nice to like, you know, kind of see this stuff now that it's coming towards the end, it makes the episodes that much more heartfelt and, you know, good yeah and it's like we've we've already said that uh they're they've done a even though this may not have been the best episode so far is that they have improved a lot Mm -hmm. and i'll again say it why couldn't you've done this (laughs) two years ago but you know but they have definitely been bringing it and it's definitely good to see Yes. Yep. Better late than never, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you everyone for your awesome sauces. So that leads us into ours. Um, I guess, do you want to go first LT? I will. Um, Just like Mike said, I picked an awesome sauce for father. Gabriel being fatherly is that, you know, his arc has been so interesting because we've seen him, you know, start off uh, in a position where he kind of lost his faith and he kind of got it back and then he kind of lost it again. And then now he's back to, it's like he's, he's back in the, you know, you know, father Gabriel side of the house. And it was, it was good to see him, you know, talking to that Commonwealth guy because, I think the approach that he took at that point was going to get him more information from the guy anyway, because if he knows he's hurt, you know, 
the going strong arm with him probably wouldn't have gotten him very far. But yet, Father Gabriel was not only able to give him a little bit of comfort, but actually find out some things in the meantime. So that worked well to forward the plot. Um, I listed as my awesome sauce of seeing Daryl back on the bike. Uh, you know, when we saw motorcycles on the on the flat car on the train, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be an opportunity. And sure enough, you know, we get to see uh, Daryl back running through the woods on the back of a motorcycle going fast. So that was that was definitely awesome to see. And while I'm going to talk about it more later, I also thought it was very interesting the fact that they're taking them to some outpost so they'll be out of the way. And where did they take them? Oh, no. They took them right back to Alexandria. Yep. And I'm going to opine on that a little bit later in another sauce. (laughs) But the fact that when they're thinking, oh, no, what are we going to do? Where are we going to end up? And they're right back in Alexandria. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, awesome. Uh, all right, Brian, do you have any awesome sauces? I would like you to go next. All righty. Um, all right. Well, I thought I got a kind of a kick out of this LT because I figured one of your awesomes would have seen, you know, would have been happy seeing Rosita and Gabriel grabbing all those weapons off the stormtrooper <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> well, yes, but since you said it, I was going to let you have it. <laughs> yeah, I was like just seeing that. I'm like, finally, you guys are like searching some, you know, a, a Commonwealth Walker stormtrooper. They were taking the stuff. Yes. <laughs> so that was awesome to see finally after all this time. Uh, uh, and what I was trying to say before, um, it's just, again, getting these great character moments and we got mm-hmm. one with Carol, um, when she was consoling Maggie about le- losing Herschel. And this was, I guess, after, you know, she saw the Walker kid and had to put him down. Um, so it's just like, I mean, Carol made a lot of like, kind of like good points too about like, oh yeah, it's like, you know, she was talking about, uh, I guess like when she got her job at the Commonwealth, it was like the old world where it's like, you know, she never saw anybody or, and like, like back then we wouldn't have talked to each other, but the new world or this new world or the end of the world, whatever, like forced us to, uh, forced us to become family. And she was like, and that's like a, you know, gift or whatever it, but again, it was like just these moments that we are getting between our characters. It's like, it's, it, it was it's really really powerful and it was like watching it too i kept getting these kind of like a rick and carl vibes you know it's like you're seeing uh like or at least i was seeing in maggie like she, I, I don't know i like she was in that kind of role of rick back in the day you know rick, right you know it was always like he was i mean i guess rick though would have been like i'm going to go after these people and slaughter them <laughs> you know or no one touches my family you know and you know i guess we do end up there at the end but you know it's just these you know we don't have rick or carl in this iteration of the walking dead you know, so mm-hmm. it's like what they're doing, though, it's like they're, I feel like they keep bringing like those little hints of, of that. And it just was so enjoyable to watch. So, I mean, it's it's making knowing that we're coming to this end, you know, it it's it's making some very, very good television. And I kind of like you were saying, I'm like, where were they many years ago? you know, this could have, yeah, he could have been doing more of this, but you know, that's hindsight, you know, they probably thought they had plenty of time to do stuff. (laughs) And now they know that they have an end. Yeah. Um, another thing, which I didn't catch, um, until after the fact, or when I was doing my rewatch though, but I did recognize the voice when it happened. I'm not sure if I was like trying to, figure it out when I watched the episode the first time. But so I guess event Nicole Brown was credited as a guest star on this episode. 
And yes, she was. Yeah. And I like was, yeah, when I came across it, I was like, oh, wait. I'm like, that must have been who that was. Cause, you know, it's like we, she, you know, we didn't see her in the episode, but she was the voice of the Commonwealth sword soldier that Rosita was talking to when she was trying to contact the outpost. Um, and so I dig a little bit digging and of course, you know, just get confirmation. So I wasn't wrong because I can't see the credits on my, uh, YouTube TV for some reason. It was like, it just shrank it down uh, or maybe it was at the beginning. I'm not sure. But, uh, so I found the article of, of her talking about it. And so she said, um, like the, what she said about it, she's like, I was super sad that the show was ending and told Angela King and Scott Gimple that I, um, I wish I could be a part of the show in some way before they wrapped. Uh, she, I guess she was talking to Entertainment Weekly. She's like, traveling to Atlanta to perhaps be a walker wasn't possible, so they came up with the idea of me being part of the show via voiceover, and I couldn't have been more excited to do that. I don't know if I had been, if I had been credited and didn't know if my fellow fans would be able to tell it was me. Um, if I wasn't, so I'm surprised that quite a few of them knew of uh, her fans knew it was her immediately and I'm humbled that I was credited. It would have been happy being an eternal Easter egg of my favorite show. Uh, love, 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 love that, you know, they did that. It was just a fun little, you know, cameo or, you know, or just like a, or being a part of the show, at least they were able to do it. So it was, um, it just definitely made a nice little highlight. I just I just remember when I heard that voice the first time I watched it. I was just like, that sounds really familiar. And I'm like, who is that? And I just couldn't think of it. And then of course finding, you know, after the fact, I was like, oh, that's so awesome. Oh, good 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 good. Anyways, that was all the awesomenesses I had. Uh Brian? Well, I was uh shocked by the engineer who killed himself. That was Oh, that yeah. was pretty shocking. Um, so I put that in my awesome sauce because it was like, oh, I don't think we've ever seen that one before. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be in people's sad sauces. And since I didn't get to do a rewatch, um, the last four or five episodes are kind of blurring all in my head. So hopefully this is this is right. But the this was the episode where Maggie came across that child walker wasn't it yeah yeah good i th thought so um yeah that that was both sad and awesome because I, it just um the the acting um i thought uh lauren cohan was really good in those scenes and and then you know also when um she was with uh, melissa mcbride um talking about uh herschel later I thought those were really good scenes. Um, dramatic. Um, I liked uh, Ezekiel and Negan working together at, and, you know, it's like putting aside some of their, you know, issues with each other. And obviously it's more, you know, everyone has something against Negan, but, but uh, Ezekiel blames him for, um, can't remember his, not Henry's Henry's brother. I can't remember his name now. But I mean, it wasn't Negan that killed him. It wasn't like you know killing Glenn and and Abraham. It was right. Or, or it was um, through that long haired dude, <laughs> which I was going to look him up to see what what the character's name. I know the I, I've met the the actor um, in person. Um, what's his name? Uh, Josh, I'll, I'll look him up. I'll look him up, uh, in the next segment. Um, cause I, I should know his name. <laughs> I follow him on Twitter, um, uh, and Instagram, I think anyway. So, um, you know, it was, it was him. It wasn't even, um, the guy, uh, that was the head of it. It was, it was, you know, that uh, underling, mm -hmm. uh, that killed him, that brat. <laughs> so anyway, I, I like that scene where, you know, he confronted Negan for, for that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that Negan fully got it until now, because now he's finally going to have a family. Right. Right. So I think he now understands it where, 
as before. I don't think he ever did, which, which makes me wonder. It's like, well, why didn't, uh, you know, he had all those wives. <laughs> you think he <laughs> yeah. would have, uh, had a few, uh, had a few kids, yeah, little, little Negans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I don't have it written down here, but, um, I did like, uh, you know, them finding out that like LT said that outpost 22 was Alexandria. Um, I didn't see that coming. I probably should have, but, uh, I thought that was interesting. And where are the kids? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, exactly. Where are the kids? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I'd have to kind of agree with you. Like, see, like, um, the, the seeing the the Walker child, like, like that whole just how they played that with you know Maggie seeing the kid at first, especially because they just lost all their kids and she's looking for them and seeing, you know, that kid Walker kid walk up to her, you know, and that just make make giving her all the flashbacks and stuff like that. But the one thing I liked about it was like, you know, it's been a We've had good, like, interesting, you know, walkers that they've, you know, had on the show. You know, I, yeah. I, mean, I used to say that before, like, in the, the you know, in Fear, you know, it's like, oh, one of the enjoyable things is like, wow, they're doing some fun stuff with the walkers. Because we're kind of at a point where it's like walkers aren't really becoming or not really scary anymore. Right. You know, they're not really disturbing. They're, we're just used to them at this point. But seeing this kid walker it was it, it gave you that sad because of it's a kid and then what maggie's dealing with but at the same time he was really really creepy <laughs> oh and yeah it, and it was like for for you know f- having that was, feeling yeah. Yeah, yeah having that feeling again after so long really did make the, like part this watching this episode like and let's let's be honest that despite the fact that we know that Maggie's got some plot armor, <laughs> yeah, I the way she acted that scene, you know, again, like it's already been said, props to Lauren Cohen for this one. But the way she acted that scene, I almost thought she's going to lock up. She's not going to be able to, you know, deal with this kid walker. Mm-hmm. And just the look on her face, I mean, I was like, wow, you know, yeah. she's, she's tore up on this because what I appreciate is that we've had all these opportunities to see hard Maggie, tough Maggie, but now we got to see human Maggie, you know, we got to see her conflicted. We got to see her being a little emotional. So that was you know, well done on her part, well done for the writers. And of course, you know, kudos to the kid and kudos to Nicotero's effects department. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause he was, I mean, we've seen a lot of walkers, you know, we've seen drippy walkers and stretchy walkers and, you know, mossed up walkers and rotted walkers and frozen walkers. But, just the way they had that kid made up and the way the kid brought it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely effective. Yep. 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 It was awesome for sure. All righty. Well, if that was all of our awesome sauces, let's get into our week. Yo, worthless and weak. Well, looks like we can kick the week sauce off with Mike from Asheville. Who says the motorcycle chase? He says, wasn't the best visually. Almost looked green screen at one point. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, Ivan from Minnesota gave still the Commonwealth soldiers. They're just not formidable. The one soldier was literally sleeping in the back of the bumpy vehicle. Come on, man. I want to say I like the train battle, but they suck at fighting, so it was really easy for our group. <laughs> yeah. I, well, yeah, yeah, but our group is, you know, stone cold killers. Yeah, they, I guess I guess they've had more practice. <laughs> and I will say this, just from experience, it might be a bumpy truck, 
But trust me when I tell you from experience that riding in the back of a truck like that and trying to stay awake is tough. Tough. (laughs) Because there have been many, many a time where I have nodded off riding in the back of a truck. (laughs) It's like it's like flying. When I get comfy in the chair and you have that constant drone of the motor, it puts me out every time. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's like kind of like you get you get a little bit of some white noise with the mm-hmm. <laughs> you get that constant room 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 and it's like plop. Yeah. Yeah, I'm i I'll, yep. I'll just go and just do my weak sauce cuz I was kind of agreeing with Ivan just to get out of the way, but it's like I just <sighs> Again, the Commonwealth soldiers, and they've just shown us time and time again that they're pretty much useless. <laughs> and they make very stupid mistakes for the plot. Um, and I mean, I don't know. I, you know, they are, in a sense, red shirts, but it's just, it hasn't been really, really enjoyable to watch them. You know, like they're just, they're just there for, you know, to move things along. So of course Maggie and company need to escape. And of course the Commonwealth soldier is going to be asleep and they can sit there and, you know, make their escape, you know, and I think mm-hmm. there's actually coming up in a, in a, uh, not next week's, but the week or not this week we're coming soon. And then the one after that I watched the other night, it's like, there was another one that I'm going to have to sit there and talk about of like a stupid soldier mistake <laughs> for plot. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're just, that's just, they're just not that great. <laughs> no, they are and weak. All right. Well, they're like stormtroopers. Well, no, know? right. But it's just, it's almost kind of like getting silly to where I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, it's almost worse than stormtroopers. At least the stormtroopers try. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. Uh, anyway, it just kills me. And I think you know we've talked about this on a previous episode, but they wear these, you know, this armor, supposedly armor, and yet. They get eaten just like any other person. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, they'd be better off putting bacon on or something. <laughs> yeah. mm, bacon. Yeah. They just say, yeah, their armor doesn't quite, you know, I don't know. I guess it's just part, you know, armor, part more like uniform than it actually doesn't seem to really do anything because i mean obviously no, it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to all right well who wants to go next well i guess i can um and this is going to be a series of worst decisions ever on the part of the commonwealth and since you already mentioned it i'm going to say first it's the worst prisoner security ever if you know you're going to be riding four or five people in the back of the truck you don't put one guard by himself you have two guards that way your buddy can help keep you awake that the odds that both of you are going to nod off is substantially less than just one of you and if there's one guy in the back of the truck and there's four or five people that you're transporting how hard is it going to be for them to overpower you (laughs) so i said that's worst decision ever the next thing that i'm going to complain about is that's the worst convoy security ever because they lost a truck and they didn't really seem to know and he just kept going (laughs) (laughs) yeah i gotta agree with you on this one when they when they get to the end and they go one two three (laughs) Oops. One, two, three. <laughs> Wait a minute. We had four trucks when we started. Huh? I, yeah. I, it's like, that's why you have somebody riding tail. I mean, they had motorcycle escorts. That's why you put a guy on a motorcycle behind the convoy. <laughs> In case somebody decides that they're going to deviate from the route, start throwing people out the back of the truck, perhaps. Uh, it was just bad. And then the fact it was that, it, bad. 
that it ran off the road and hit a tree and all these guys are dead and they're like later on show up and go hey where'd the other truck go i just was like you know all my years of convoy planning and i was going this is like mis- this is like elementary mistake 101 guys <laughs> you know, bad yeah and then while we're talking about worst So who had the bright idea that if we're going to send these guys off into the wilderness, that didn't anybody read their resumes and say, maybe we shouldn't send them home? (sighs) That perhaps if we're going to pick a labor camp to send these guys to, we should send them somewhere that they're not intimately familiar with and used to live in. Did nobody put two and two together to say, these are the people from Alexandria, so we're going to send them right back to Alexandria. Alexandria. You're right. <laughs> I mean, there's obviously somebody in the planning department that didn't put two and two together on that one. And it seems like wouldn't they have other outposts to deal one with? One would think people instead of like, oh yeah, we just have this new community. When they're out, when they're out doing their hard labor, that theoretically they're out somewhere, you know, working on the railroad tracks. Maybe they've got somewhere else, anywhere else that they could have sent them. Yeah, but sending them back, sending them back to Alexandria was stupid. Yeah, it was a great. It's it's a great reveal at the end, and we all go, "Oh no, they've sent them back to Alexandria." And I'm and the first thing I thought of is now they know where all the stuff is hidden. They know the ways in and the ways out. They know the street layout. They know where the sewers are. Mm-hmm. I said, worst tactical move ever. Yeah, that makes some interesting point too because I noticed though that whenever Rosita was talking to, uh, you know soldier outpost 20 or whatever or Yvette Nicole you know her voiceover that she mentioned that like next to like the train tracks so I was thinking like wait Alexandria we've never there's we've never know that there was any kind of train tracks or anything near Alexandria oh Which, yes we did was there yeah think about it Remember when uh, Denise got killed? That was along train tracks. Yeah, but I didn't think that that was re- really close oh, to Oh, no, it was, it was really close. Oh, It was okay. really close. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Well, yep. that's what made me question, because I was kind of like, oh, well, because then that put my mind, was like, well, I guess it's been a year since, you know, because we were just in the last what, couple episodes right. where they were doing Founder's Day. I'm like, okay, well, we were just seeing a Founder's Day from, you know, when they first arrived and then i was thinking i'm like okay maybe they built the train tracks to that but i, I guess you're right i I'd never thought that there was train tracks close by to alexandria not that they even had a train though to even use them well true um continuing on with my series of worsts I'm going to go ahead and dish on the Commonwealth guys as a whole and say they have the worst situational awareness ever. So when the train was going down the tracks and they get to the point where the switches has to be flipped, that one guy is out there by himself trying to work on the switch. And I'm thinking to myself, self, if you are going to ambush a train, what's the first thing you need to do? You need to stop the train. Mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you want to isolate and eliminate people with guns. And you've effectively done that because, of course, it wasn't until later that his buddy showed up to help. And then his buddy, you know, uh, wandered off. So the poor the poor guy trying to manipulate the switch ended up being out there by himself for quite a bit of time. (laughs) And once you have the idea You know, once it begins to dawn on you that something is not right about this, go back to the train and back up. You know, get out of the area. The fact that you're sitting there, something's going on, and you know something's not right, but yet you're going to linger by yourself. This is not good. So that whole thing was just like, yep, it 
pretty well worked out just the way they planned. And, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't like the the whole Daryl charging through the train, chasing the guy and, you know, all the stuff they did to capture the train. But still, Commonwealth, I'm talking to you now. This was wholly avoidable. <laughs> Had you just backed up. Once you see things going bad, call for help. Back up. Make sure that everybody is looking. These are just a few things that you could do to avoid having your train stolen. <laughs> uh, they should have hired you to be their security. Well, for the <laughs> and I think the last thing is, and Brian talked about it, when Mr. Engineer managed to shiv himself in the neck, this is why, even if you have a cooperative prisoner in this situation, you need to restrain them. Good point. Yep. Because, you know, maybe he wasn't taught now, but he might soften up later. But when you leave his hands free, even if he's not, even if he's being compliant and not being assaultive nor resistive, we could avoid things like that because he could, could just have easily stuck that screwdriver into your neck mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i was i, I was kind of shocked by that but i i also had a moment of really <laughs> you're so worried about what your family's gonna what they're gonna do to your family that you go ahead and fall on your screwdriver uh, yeah. just well anyway that's pretty much it all righty all good points all very good points. Did you have anything, Brian? Uh, well, I would I would kind of agree with the uselessness of the Commonwealth soldiers. I don't know why they are as useless as they are, but they are. Um, maybe they don't get out as much as they should. Uh, and I think that um, I thought it was fairly predictable how the warden would act um not necessarily you know that it was bad but but that it was um i don't know like that he'd be kind of like a a neganish type of uh you know except for the you know having a harem kind of thing <laughs> um but anyway uh it was interesting to see the the guy from um, that uh, princess had to deal with, if you recall, mm -hmm. and then oh, yeah. then he came back and tried to assassinate the governor, or maybe he didn't. I don't know, but but uh, um, I thought that they could have done a little more with him in this episode. I thought so. Yeah, I don't know if that would be weak, but um, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, other than the the just all the things that LT said, um, <laughs> especially, you know, them just like, well, you know, we lost a truck. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. you know, and not really like, uh, you'd think that if they were in a convoy like this, they would, you know, stick together, like literally, you know, be no more than two car lengths apart or whatever, you know, and something like what happened wouldn't, happen right 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 or well, if it did they would all know and they would you know deal yeah, with it accordingly because think about this brian and, and you you just made me want to say this it's one thing if you were driving at night in normal circumstances and there would be other cars on the road right but it's not like there's a lot of traffic out there in Commonwealthia. <laughs> so if you're sitting there going, man, I wish he would dip those high beams that he's blaring into my, you know, my rear view mirrors. And then suddenly, oh, that's better. There's no light shining in my rear view mirrors now. <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah. That, that would be kind of a hint at this point. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's like, just, you know, did Bob and Jim decide to stop and take a pee break? Or? Right, right. I mean, that's the thing that is making this kind of like, it's just, it's, it's becoming like, 
less enjoyable to watch because it's like, you know, they presented the Commonwealth as being like this, like larger than life, like, you know, like a community that has soldiers and all this other stuff that you would think that like, okay, well then like, are they losing people all the time? Do they lose trucks? You know, it's, it, it's kind of getting comical, you know, where it's like, okay, they're not this, like, you know, they're, they're not this threat, you know, like their, their soldiers are stupid, you know, and obviously it's for plot reasons, you know, they got to move, you know, move it along. It's, or well, Kyle, it's to the point where I was thinking, okay, these guys are, you know, and not to disparage my former comrades, but it's like, okay, these guys are like, you know, this is like the national guard. And then I went, no, this is not the national guard. This is more like, the guys at the American Legion post that <laughs> retired 50 years ago. And now I'm kind of going, I think I could take the Commonwealth with my old scout troop. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that at least, at least they listen. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's really to the point where, you know, these guys are, you know, bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, I'm, and I keep going, why, why was everybody so scared of them? Right. Right. Well, and that's just kind of, you know, even though we've been talking about how great the episodes have been, you know, because we're getting towards the end, but it is kind of like a little bit, okay, well, here's what we would say, lazy writing. You know, they just serve a po- point to just make our characters be able to do things, you know, like get through things or, you know, Hey, let's fight. Oh, they can, we need them to escape. Okay, perfect. One of the soldiers is asleep in the back of the truck. That's watching, you know, five of them. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it just, it is, it gets, it's just getting, yeah, it just gets to where it's like, okay, well, okay, fine. I get it that you got to let it happen. And well, we and, and figure on. that if the troops are those, those, that much of a bunch of incompetent mooks. I mean, what does that say about the citizenry of the Commonwealth? <laughs> yeah, they're all, well, I mean, yeah. It's I, like, oh, I can't escape. There's a guy in the back of the truck. I guess I have to sit here. Yeah, sit here and <laughs> scouts on or do not like tell a lie yeah. or like whatever. Uh, well, goodness. or kind of like, oh, I can't escape. There's a guy in the back of the truck. Yeah, like that prevents me from doing anything. Uh, all right. Well, I don't want to beat that dead horse. Um, let's, if there's nothing else, let's go into our what saws. What, what, what? And we did just get one from Ivan from Minnesota. And he said the Commonwealth guy who just killed himself. Very weird scene. And I was just like, okay, question mark. And then I guess a meh face. Yeah. I think we all took that scene a little differently. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was listener what sauces. So that goes into ours. Um, Brian, it looks like you had something written down. I think you mentioned this before, too. <laughs> it is annoying to me that the 21st episode of the season is called Outpost 22. <laughs> okay. You're, you're walking dead. You guys have like triggered me my um you know ocd ocd it's like uh why is that outpost 22 it should be 22nd episode or you know call it outpost 21 it would have been perfect you got you know <laughs> so the dumb things i think of uh to to keep my brain um addled <laughs> <laughs> so anyway yeah pretty minor thing to say what over but but I wanted to say it. So. <laughs> no, but it is, I, I, I could kind of agree because it. you're just looking at this. I remember even just like making a doc before we, like before this episode even aired, it was like, oh, okay. Episode 21 titled Outpost oh, 22. <laughs> it's like, it should be the 22nd episode. <clears throat> oh, anyways. So maybe, yeah, maybe they did it it's too. It's like, um, they did it on purpose, Brian. Yeah, I was saying maybe they did. Who's it on it. first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> third base. Third base. <laughs> yeah. Uh, LT, did you have any watts? No, I think I said everything I wanted to do in weeks. It 
didn't quite get haughty enough for me. <laughs> All right. And I didn't have any to add myself. So that takes us into our Oh Hell No Sauce. Oh Hell No. And we got one from Renee. Uh, She said, seriously, you mean to tell me out of all that commotion they were making, the Commonwealth soldier didn't wake up until all of them were getting ready to jump out or jump other than Maggie? Shrug, shrug. You're talking about suspension of disbelief. Yeah. It's because she took too long. (laughs) Well, because the truck bounced and she fell backwards. Right. She, Everybody else was like, yoikes and away. Yep. Yoikes and away. <laughs> yeah. Well. And of course, just just to editorialize that, jumping out of the bed of a moving deuce and a half onto the road, I was going to say, unless you've, unless you've been to gymnastic school or you went to American ninja class or something like that. Parachuting class to learn how to drop. Even, even parachuting. It would have been, you would have landed on your yeah. backside pretty hard. Mm. Yep. And, and, and as a younger man, having fallen off of the backs of trailers and pickup trucks moving. Oh, no. It's, I, I've, it's, I've fallen off two story, of, you know, roofs and dive. Oh, wow. Yeah. And dealt well, but then because I, not necessarily I took gymnastics, but I just, I, did know how the like, oh yeah, if that's coming down, you know, you can kind of roll out of it. But the idea though the is prob- like the problem with me is it was feet but head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just say it's like you always I always think that I'm like, oh, I could totally just like, you know, land and roll out of that super easy. But it's like, yeah, it's never quite that easy as you think it is. And <laughs> you're more nope. likely going to not do it and hit really hard. Oh, goodness. Well, all right. Well, that was our only oh, hell no sauce. So let's go into our sad and awe sauce. And we uh, got one from uh, Renee from Fairburn. And she said, Maggie, seeing that child walker was so sad. Crying face, crying face. Uh, I know she was thinking about little Herschel when she saw him. That's why it was so hard for her to kill him. Crying face emoji. Carol consoling Maggie had me crying. It was so heartbreaking. Agreed. Yeah, that whole scene was very, I'd said before, it's just they, they're doing a good job with giving it the, these kind of scenes. Mm-hmm. And also it's great acting by the actors. Uh, Father Gabriel telling the Commonwealth soldier, people remember the last thing you did, plus taking out his Bible and staying with the Commonwealth soldier while he died was so touching. And the other sad and awe, she said, was the other Commonwealth soldier saying what they were going to do to his family if um, he did what they asked of him. And ultimately taking his own life to save his family was sad too. Crying face. Yep. Yep. Um, no, nope, good ones. Uh, uh, that was all of our listeners says and Asa, so we can go into ours and I think we're both going to kind of say the same thing. Uh, but yeah, the child walker was very sad. Um, and it, I think that's what really kind of helped this episode and helped with the Maggie kind of being, not necessarily a center of it, but, uh, you know, she, she, I don't know, like she just gave me so many kind of a good old, like old Rick Grimes, you know, feel to her, you know, Mm -hmm. it was just like seeing her like, you know, go over like what she, her remorse or whatever of feeling about not being able to protect Herschel, seeing the kid being reminded of it and, you know, and then having to actually put the kid down, you know, it was just, you know, and it's the way she did it. The fact that she was kind of holding it and like kind of stroking his hair. Yeah. And, it was the whole, you know, I'm really sorry about this kid. I'm sorry you're dead, but I've got to do this. Yeah. And 
again, the look on her face and the the kid who was playing the walker, just not not your average walker kill. Yeah, no. I agree. Yeah, good, sad. Yeah, I mean, basically what you guys said, um, and what we've already said. And since we already, we did talk about it, I did put sad sauce for, you know, Mr. Engineer's self-demise there. Yeah. Because yeah. even though he only got that, you know, a couple of scenes in, just the way he did it, it's it still it still carried the point. Yeah. Even though I'm wondering why he had to do it and my other points, it was sad. Uh, you know, credit to the actor. Um, but just the fact of he would rather you know, he'd rather kill himself than, you know, be found to be a traitor. So Yeah. Yeah, it, it was sad that that's like, I guess in this is thinking about like okay that's what these that's what these soldiers are what it is to like work for the commonwealth it's like you don't necessarily it's like you're almost like selling a piece of your soul or you're Mm -hmm. handing them some kind of collateral so that you can stay alive and just you know and they like you still owe a debt no matter what because i mean for one it was very like it very gruesome watching him do that but then i also remember carol was like telling him like hey we'll we'll just hurt you a little bit so that you can go back and just say like you know oh they got the one up on me or whatever you know but then this is what he chose to do like it was like there was right. no other option so yeah it was just well, and if you think about it if you go back to our relationship with the commonwealth you know, we've kind of known that they're all about, uh, you know, pluses and balances and what you take and what you owe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you sort of take that to the logical conclusion that maybe some of the people that Pamela disappeared were not necessarily bad folks or had done anything untoward, but maybe it was somebody who, you know, Maybe the newspaper boy that threw her newspaper in the bushes rather than on the front porch. You know, you don't, <laughs> uh, as as the this section has gone on, we kind of see that they are almost more punishment than merits the crime. Mm-hmm. Maybe so. I, I just I think I think it's a good point we've made about that. Yep. 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 Oh. So- all righty. Well, if that is all the sad and awesome, let's go into our feedback. We can talk about We're it. We're done talking. Time to listen. All right. And as we always get, which is awesome, is a voicemail from Renee from Fairburn. So I will go ahead and play that now. Hi guys, this is Renee from Fairburn calling in about The Walking Dead. Um, alrighty, this episode here was um, kind of boring. I mean, it was, it was. I think Mike said a filler. Um, yeah, that's what it seemed like. It was. I mean, it was. It was. It was. It was decent, but it. I mean, for us to only have three episodes left, they need. To, they need to. They need to get the ball rolling, and. Me personally, I said it last week and I said it this week in my feedback that I'm ready for them to wrap up this Commonwealth mess. I really am. I mean, I want something other than the Commonwealth. I need them to go out with a bang. And to me, of course, the bang would be Rick Grimes, but I, I just, it's time to wrap it up. And the episode next week looked like Eugene's going to court or whatever. I, I just want this to be over. The Commonwealth. I mean, I really do. I want them to be at home and and they enjoying a little me time, you know, when they get ready to, you know, go off the air. I just want something. I just want this Commonwealth mess to be over with. And like I was saying in my feedback with uh, Maggie and not just Maggie, Rosita, because I can only imagine how they're feeling their kids, Daryl as well. And I think I forgot to put that in my feedback and I'm not going to go back on the Facebook and put it in. So I'm just going to say it now. 
you know, as well, you know, they kids that and when Daryl was like, you, you, you took my kids, man, that was so touching because basically they are his kids because Michonne has abandoned them. I'm so pissed off with Michonne and I cannot wait till she explains. <laughs> but I don't know if that was me and my husband. I probably I don't know what I would have done. I, I can't see leaving my child. But. I understand Maggie why she was crying and because I don't think it really was about the walker so much or whatever. It's about her child, of course. Um, Rosita, I see why she was kind of like throwed off. She wasn't at her best because she's thinking about her child. It is that's the hard that is so hard. That is so I can just only imagine because that's all I would be thinking about. That's it. Nothing else. I need to get back to my child. I need to get my child. And, um, um, Negan, I said it in my feedback. I am so happy that they did not gloss over it because they have, they have, they've been touching on it, but not touching on it. And it needed to be addressed because even though I'm okay with his Negan's redemption arc, um, because everybody can be redeemed, you know, everybody can be redeemed. I would, I would be remiss not to say that because I, you know, go to church on a regular and I know that my God is a forgiving God. So, you know, if he forgives, who am I to hold on to stuff? And, but they needed to address it. I mean, Negan did so many horrible things and uh, for me, Negan was bad from the beginning. I, all, you know, I used to say that all the time. He was bad to me because of what he did to his wife, and you know, and then he, um, he had those other women, and he was taking the women from, um, you know, their spouse, um, like Cheryl. She on the fear. She's still dealing with that because of what he did. Dwight got that. You know, he burnt. I mean, Negan did some god awful things. He really did. And like, and on my feedback, I'm like, the audacity of you, sir, to say that you have a child on the way. I mean, Glenn, seriously. I mean, come on now. It's just certain things that sh- I don't know. It's like. But, you know, he has a child. He has a wife now. So I guess he's more understanding. And and I feel The Walking Dead did, um, they really did a good job in, in this episode with Negan showing him the things that he did. I mean, because it, they, they always, it's always, why is it like that? It's always like the so-called upper people, the people with money that always want to have someone working for them and building from them. It's always like a communist. It's always someone that's going to come in and they're going to, they're going to use the lower class people per se, just like slavery, just like the Holocaust. Just, it's always like that. And I don't understand that for the life of me when I watch shows like that, you know, like, um, and I know, you know, I always go off on a tangent, but like the Handmaid's Tales, like why, why, why? I'm so happy on the Handmaid's Tales right now that Serena is getting what she deserved because now she's a handmaid, so that you can see how another another person's another person feels. For me, I have empathy and com- compassion. I don't have to be in another person's position to understand how it feels. I I know in my heart that it's wrong. Like it's not, you're not supposed to control anyone. You're not supposed to tell anyone what they can and cannot do. So they always use, like I said, the people that they consider beneath them to become their slaves or to work for them. And then, um, the, um, the guy that was over it, he telling them they building a better place for other people. Other people, we are the other people. Like, I just do not understand why it's always like that. And now we're on a show that has zombies that are not no longer people. And instead of us, and I have said this, and I can re- not reiterate this enough, instead of us coming together as one, it always has to be someone else out there that says, I'm going to be, you know, the bigger person. I'm going to be, I'm a, I'm, I'm going to use other people and I'm going to get this and I'm going to have this and it's just going to be about me, me, me. Instead of us coming together and to get rid of the zombies, to fight them instead of fighting each other. It's like, and I always, you know, have to hearken back on this. It's like what goes on in society now. It's always somebody telling you what you can do and what you can't do. It's, I mean, we have a whole war that's going on 
in Ukraine. And we as Americans, we need to come together. So if Putin think he gonna bring his behind over here, we come together and we show him that we're united, but we're not like that. And I really hate that we're not like that. I really hate that. And I really believe if it was an apocalypse, this is how it would be because this is society. And it's really sad that it's like that. It really is sad. And to watch shows like this, you know, Handmaid's Tale, really any show that you watch, even on um, the House of Dragon, I don't care what kind of show that you watch. Um, I watch The Last Kingdom, shows like that. It's always somebody that's thinking that they're better than other people. Like you're lower than me. You're nothing. It's always somebody that wants to come in and take, 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 take from people that were already there. Something that does not belong to you. You just want to take. And I do not understand that. And I hate that we as human beings that we are like that. Not all human beings are like that. Not all black people are not like that. Not all white people are not like that. I mean, we can all come together. That's why for me, I feel like I I cannot be prejudiced because I know that doing slavery, I know that doing a civil rights movement, the white people came in and they helped us. I know if had it not been for our white counterparts that we wouldn't be with where we are. So I know that it's good white people. I'm never going to feel like that is, you know, that all white people are horrible. No, they're not. No, they're not. I'm not going to feel like all um Asian people or Hispanic people are horrible. No, they're not. Just like I'm not going to feel like all black people are good because no, they're not. We need to come together as a human race, as one race. And like I said, I always go off on a tangent and I'm sorry. Okay, that's the end of that. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. We like, like your tangents. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, it's, there's a lot there. Um, you know, it's just one of the sad things, you know, about our world, but that's, you know, our shows, you know, are, uh, you know, these stories come from a reflection of, you know, like our history and just humanity in general. I mean, you know, it's like we've seen a lot of horrible things over the you know the last you know decades or almost over a hundred year like you know with world war ii and you know just all the atrocities from the holocaust to you know yeah like every war that you know has happened with you know ukraine it's just it's just you know I hate to say it but you know it's like it's i can't remember who said it or what you know what saying you know what it quote or whatever it came from but you know it's like just in the general it's like you know just humanity it's just like i don't know if that's the right thing to say it's like you know because humanity is just like we're the only ones that are you know control like things or whatever you know it's like we're we're just destined to destroy ourselves (laughs) it's just like that's they're, everybody's got a, their own ideas, you know, and uh, everybody's like, us against them. And, you know, it's just like, it's just kind of, you know, there, there's, there's good and we have to like embrace that and think that, you know, the world can be a better place and that we can get around. Cause when you think about it in the most simplest terms, it's just like, well, we're all here trying to do the same thing, you know, it's just survive and just try to make the world a better place. But, you know, there's other people that have a different ideas and they want to take advantage of that. Um, anyways, uh, I thought it was interesting that, you know, like talking about Negan and having his redemption arc. <laughs> and then I just thought it's like, well, but can everybody be redeemed? And that's, I'm talking about Sebastian. <laughs> Not that he got a chance to do it, but we, <laughs> I think a lot of people were just kind of like, okay, him being gone or being eaten or whatever was like that's what well, we were wanting to see. Remember Kyle part, being redeemed? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that never would have happened. Part of the thing about having a redemption arc is, you know, if you'll pardon me for you know doing throwing a religious tidbit in there, you kind of have to have your Saul on the Damascus Road moment. You know, 
in order in order for there to be redemption at some point you have to realize that you need redemption yeah and arguably speaking you know we could say that when negan was in the hospital bed in alexandria after rick cut his throat and those years that he sat in the cell gave him time to think about it right which again from an editorial standpoint the reason that they call prisons penitentiaries was because the quaker model would put you in a cell by yourself so you could read the bible and be penitent Mm -hmm. makes sense yep so it still goes back to in order for one to have redemption one must uh, acknowledge the fact they did wrong and seek redemption yeah 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 so the problem with Sebastian is Sebastian never thought he did anything wrong. <laughs> no, true. I just, I was thinking that it's like, but like we would have never even thought or wanted to see him try to get redemption. <laughs> he kind of was like already past the point of anybody giving him a chance to redeem himself. Even exactly. But, you know, he never even got a chance or he wasn't here long enough to even try to attempt that. Nope. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Renee, for your voicemail as always. Um, uh, she did have just a few little other things and uh, that she wrote down for feedback. She was like, overall, decent episode, but it's time to wrap up this Commonwealth commonwealth mess i mean we only have three more episodes left and i told you pamela was evil shrug shrug and peace and love heart 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 you were right Mm -hmm. (laughs) i didn't want to believe it i wanted to just think she was dense but uh yep yeah no she was just hiding behind the curtain yeah plausible deniability yep yep which i think i believe i said uh at one point Mm mm-hmm Yep, you did. All right. Well, next. Well, next we have Dieta from Detroit who says, Ezekiel and Negan working together to free the rest of the group. How did Kelly go from wanting to run to I'm scared and downtrodden now? I'm sorry this doesn't fit her character because we know she's a fighter. So they turned Alexandria into an outpost. Boy, are they in for a surprise. Maggie's takedown speech about Pamela said it all. Loved it. And she finishes with, overall, another great episode. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that Maggie at the end it was kind of kind of felt similar to uh, a Rick episode. Um, I think when, at Terminus or whatever. I think he said something kind of similar to just being like, yep. I'm, you know, like basically it's like they don't know who, like, they're messing with the wrong messing people, or something. Yeah, messing with the wrong people. And Maggie's just all like, "We're going to just, you know, like take which, her down." Which now would have had the f word because yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> they did a they did a version that had it that um, if you had the DVD or Blu Ray, it was on there. On there, that's right. Like you mm-hmm. literally had to watch. They had like a different version of the same episode that was seemed to be identical, except for. Him um, yeah. using the F word at the at the end. Yeah, of course. Or- now it seems to be one F bomb per episode. <laughs> no, now yeah, which, now they're making which, it for last time. <laughs> which I yeah, which I don't mind. I mean, I never mind. Don't mind that anyway. Um, I mean, it's TBMA. Why can't it? You know, why can't they throw some F bombs? Well, <laughs> yeah. And my only thing is, as long as you use it as a garnish. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It should not be F as a verb, F as a noun, F as an adjective, (laughs) F as a pronoun. (laughs) Or or F as a conversation filler like you're from the Bronx. Yeah. 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 Uh, Use F mid-syllable, you know. That's, don't want to hear that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. Ivan from Minnesota says, I like this episode, but it was definitely my least favorite of 11C. It feels like they're moving very slow for the final episodes. They have a lot to wrap up, and this one was almost fillery. 
Well, the way I look at it, um, this episode was kind of the the start of the last four. So, you know, it kind of they kind of set the wheels in motion in the first four of the last eight. And now they needed an an episode to kind of, you know, change the vantage point to get them, you know, to Alexandria to get them to um you know, be at a point where maybe eventually they'll, you know, come back and fight the Commonwealth. Um, and you can't get there until we find out, you know, the location of Outpost 22. And right, right. It yeah. kind of makes sense that it would be Alexandria because, you know, why put it somewhere else? If it was somewhere else, it would be more difficult for them to, you know, get themselves together and be able to fight. You know, if it was just, you know, Joe's village, <laughs> it would have been more difficult. But, you know, with them being from there, they're going to know where things are hidden. They're going to, you know, know about things that the Commonwealth hmm. wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. And I think to sort of your point is that we needed an episode to kind of make some transitions. Yeah. Yeah. So... In its role as a transitory episode, it did its thing. And I'll agree with you. It may be, I think filler is not necessarily what I would say is that this is more kind of connective tissue. Yes. It needed, it yeah, needed to be, to the, it. it needed to be there to bind the, the storylines together. Right. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't like establish, where they've been taken and what they're doing and where they are, um, you can't move forward. So there has to be, there has to be a group that's been taken. There has to be a group that figures out where they're taken. There has to be another group that is still in Alexandria or sorry. Well, I, I didn't mean that. I meant, well, okay. They're kids. Most of their kids anyway, hopefully still there. Um, but we don't know. But but um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for at the Commonwealth, right? So there'll be you know other people there, but we don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, anyway, you you've got to get them to point point yeah. A to point B. So yeah, no, no, it's you know it. At least they did this all in just one episode instead of making it right. over two, which of course we know that they're, you know, they only have so many episodes less, but yeah, I think this is probably going to feel a little less fillery or feeling like something like that with what, what's to come um, because of that. It's like they're setting it all up for the big explosion of what they've right. planned. So this works out and it, it was still fun to watch. <clears throat> work they got a train uh, <laughs> they got a train yeah <laughs> choo choo uh um and all right they add the third chew and it's a choo 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 day <laughs> 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 you won't get that listeners that's that's a lower decks reference so <laughs> Sorry, Admiral Jellico has banned the sisters from <laughs> yes. performing on Starbase facilities. <laughs> uh, yeah, no right. more Zebulon sisters. Yeah. All right. Mike from Asheville says, I felt like this episode was more fillery or filler than moving the story along. Some of the episode was needed, but to me, they could have cut half of it and focused on getting closer to what next episode will be. With only three episodes left this show, this felt slow. I enjoyed pieces of the episode, though. I really wanted Daryl and Connie to kiss. Please give me that coupling. <laughs> oh. Ooh. So a no. Connie Daryl shipper. Yeah, we know that they have a relationship and they care for each other. So it's kind of like, I don't know if there's time <laughs> for that to happen or not. I don't know. All right. You want to take Glennis? I guess so. Glennis from Toronto says, it's nice to see some of the old gang back together again with Rosita, Gabriel, Carol, Maggie. <laughs> you said Carol twice, Glennis. But Rosita. Rosita, Gabriel, Carol, Maggie, Carol, and Daryl. Pamela, you don't know what's coming for you. 
And in the other location with the work gang, Negan, Ezekiel, and Kelly are going to create some mayhem, it seems. Those train tracks that remind me of Rick, Carl, and Michonne walking those tracks to Terminus, another place that was up to no good. Maggie also walking those train tracks reminded me of the reunion with Glenn, Abraham, Eugene, and Rosita, also on their way to Terminus, like the Commonwealth was rotten under the surface. So the warden tells the work gang on the bus that they now have no names. I'm sure Negan was thinking about how he treated his people with the saviors, all having to say, I'm Negan. The capture of the train, the Iron Horse, by Daryl, Carroll, and Maggie was like a planned stagecoach robbery in the Wild West. I do like the knife AK-47 getup with the guns Carol and Daryl have. Doesn't quite look like a bayonet, but an actual knife. No, actually, it is a bayonet. It's like an M9 that they actually went to a more Bowie knife looking bayonet back in the 90s. Just had to say that. Uh, Good for Connie. Connie was on the train to Destination 2, or just checked it was Destination 2. Daryl was about to give up his gun so Connie wouldn't be hurt by the trooper with a gun to Connie's head. Enter Connie badass with lessons from Daryl and elbows the trooper threat away. A relief to Daryl, for sure. So do they all hop on the train now and go find out what is it, Destination 2? Or do they more than likely branch off to assist Negan, Ezekiel, and Kelly, who have arrived in Outpost 22? Which the Commonwealth troops and Pamela think is such a stronghold, but now they have Negan, Ezekiel, and Kelly, and most likely to be joined by Rosita, Carol, Daryl, and Gabriel, who will be right at home, being in their former Alexandria, and will be take it back from these dictators with force. And Outpost 22 shows the Commonwealth and Pamela and Lance, when he was still around and alive, have been taking over numerous communities. So the Commonwealth is not all ice cream and cotton candy and may even be worse than Negan Savior's gang was. What is Destination 2? It sounds very familiar to the CRM's A's and B's. She said, this was an excellent episode. I hope this keeps up for the last few. And yes, still hoping for Rick Grimes. Smiley face. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully we do. Um, yeah, I the whole designation to, because um, I was wondering about that too, because they did kind of make a point of it. Um, but then that one soldier that uh, Father Gabriel was, you know, talking to or whatever to give up information like he was mentioning it was like it's a place that's like like he's only heard rumors of it it's been you know it's far away and people never come back again so i didn't know if that's what they were referring to outpost 22 is or is this something else because you know, it was like, I thought maybe it's like they're, they're, they're calling it like saying Connie had a designation too. And I was wondering, I was like, okay, was that what they're classifying people as like who are not or like something other than the force work camp people? I didn't know if maybe it's because, you know, she is deaf or, you know, like, is that what, you know, the children are? Um, you know, it's like they're just, they're people that aren't really, that they're not having a use for to force work that they have some other kind of you know mean you know thing for them and then of course i was like oh dear god please don't be like have a connection to the padre baby snatchers (laughs) padre Uh, because you don't know that could somehow swing back somehow um padre but, but i don't know if this is one of their little we're just going to drop this in here just to kind of give that whole still CRM ish thing going on. Cause of course, you know, Connie still makes it out. You know, she was able to escape. We, yeah. We don't know where the children are. Um, and we it don't does know. does fit though. Yeah. I mean, it does fit. And I know back when we were talking about world beyond, I know I was wondering, well, it seems like the Commonwealth is somewhere between like the main stronghold of the CRM and Omaha Mm -hmm. where, you know, they, they were originally before they started going East. Um, So 
it does stand to reason. You would think that the CRM and the Commonwealth would have uh, had some kind of thing going on. Yeah. Maybe like a they- mutually, uh, like, we'll leave you alone if you leave us alone kind of thing. And see, I don't know. Just the way they play loose and fast with time and distance, I think that would be, well, we will see. I just think that would be a bridge too far. What I was thinking of is they have the kids somewhere else and they have, you know, we're going to take Connie somewhere else because uh, back in the annals of the Industrial Revolution, they had kids that worked in a bunch of the machine plants because kids were smaller and could crawl up underneath machines and crawl into crevices that adults couldn't get into. So I'm thinking, well, just because you're smaller and skinnier, that maybe they've, they've taken them somewhere else to do other sorts of forced labor. You know, maybe they've got them working in the uh, Commonwealth uh, Trooper Armor Factory or something. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, well, I guess, well, maybe we'll find out because we know the kids are going to be saved and they'll show up at some point. But um, anyways, I don't know. I just, it's just that whole I felt just like, oh, it's just a, they just dropped this thing in to kind of like, ooh, you know, it's like, well, what is this that, you know, the only thing that we know that is like, that would feel this way would be CRM. Because again, we know Rick is with CR, with the CRM. <laughs> right. But I still think we're giving the writers way too much credit. Yeah. I think, I think, sure. I think Destination 2 is not going to be what we think it is. Maybe maybe uh, Oceanside is destination too. Or well, I think it's designation. Um, designation, destination. Yeah, right. It's just the code it's, word of what whatever the yeah, A's yeah, and the yeah. B's. Oh uh, well, I yeah, guess it was designation too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yes, we will. Left. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Glennis, as always. Great feedback. Um, all right. Well, uh, does anybody else have anything else to add? I think we pretty much covered everything I can think of. We did. And I, I'm just excited for next time. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Well, then that takes us into our news, ratings, and info. There's a couple weird stories on the news. Uh, all right. Well, Brian, since you are here with us today, do you want to take this or LT? Yeah, <laughs> I will do it. Awesome. Um, the Walking Dead got a 0.29 in the 18 to 49 demographic with 1.495 million viewers. That is up from, well, it's down slightly in the 18 to 49 demographic, uh, but up in the total number of viewers by 140,000. So that's pretty good. And when you look at the 25 to 54 and the 50 and over, it tells a different story in the ratings. Uh, It got a 0.51 in the 25 to 54 and a 0.92 in the 50 and over versus last week's 0.48 and 0.79. Talking Dead was... um, well, in the rating part, the 18 to 49, we only get that because they're, you know, they didn't make the top 50, so we don't ever get the 25 to 54 and 50 and over. But it got a 0.03 in the 18 to 49 at the later time with 319,000 viewers, slightly down um, from... 320,000 viewers the week before and last week it got a or should I say uh for episode 20 it got a 0.05 in the 1849 so uh, you know down a little on the uh 1849 and only down slightly pretty much the same um for total to, uh comparing it to the interview with the vampire I've been curious. Uh, it got a a zero point zero seven 
in the 18 to 49 with 465,000 viewers. And it's been a week or so since I put this together. I don't think that they actually made the top 50. So yeah. Uh, and it, it's not so much the viewers that counts. It's the, um, it's the 18 to 49 that positions them. So that's why we only have the 18 to 49 and the total number, uh, the previous week it got, it was in the top 50 and it got a 0 0.10 in the 18 to 49 with 469,000 viewers, pretty much the same, only off 4,000, uh, and translates to a 0 0.16, 25 to 54 and 0 0.28, 50 and over. Um, as far as parrot analytics, uh, the walking dead's doing fairly good. Um, at number five, I believe that represents, um, I don't, well, I don't know oh, no. if SpongeBob is actually on right now, but I know, uh, Game of Thrones, Stranger Things that are one and two aren't. So, um, those are the old parrots. They didn't have parrots this week. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So I should just, these are that. old parrots. Okay. Yeah. Good they, call. No, because <laughs> parrots. Paris are now doing this like instead of doing like the on you know the, the normal demand one that we get the numbers from, they do this one. It's like oh breakout shows you yeah know, for the week of and it's behind a paywall. So I'm like okay I can't see it. <laughs> so yeah, and you can only you can only really see like I'm looking at the one for the, yeah like you could only read like the first two paragraphs right. So and you know it focuses when it talks about the breakout shows they're usually talking about um first season shows yeah you know not they're not, so they wouldn't even talk about the walking dead on this yeah and i mean i guess maybe next week we'll get an actual uh, parents to talk about i would assume because we see by the rating especially in the uh, our uh, older dem demographic the people have been really watching the show from the beginning like that number is huge like, that's a right. huge increase. So I think as we go on, that's going to push it up in the parrots because it's, you know, we all know that they're not going to show the finale um, or release it a week before. It's all going to air all at the same time, no matter what. Um, so the finale should be, should be big ratings for sure. Yeah. And there's not going to be any spoilers. Nope. Because we'll all be watching it all at the same time. Interestingly enough, I'm looking at, um, there's a there's a page that has like the U United States and it has like all the numbers. And I think they, they go like a 30-day average or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't see Walking Dead in the top five there. Um, but- but I'm assuming it would be at number six or seven. Um, but that, mm. but that's like a 30 day rolling average. Right. Right. So that's you know? kind of, huh? Well, I think we're going to see those numbers rise for sure. All right. Well, um, did anybody have any news from talking dead or anything like that? I did not get to see it. Um, and I didn't really have any other news, uh, to add for this episode. Well, they're still talking big about the final episode, the big show they're going to have in L.A. And oh, that yeah. uh, they were trying to get people to send in how they were going to, you know, view the show at the end. So, I mean, they're not going to push it off to the 11, 12 o'clock hour, <laughs> like Talking Dead. <laughs> Would Who that knows? not be horrible that like they, we watch the finale and then they're like, Oh, it's just here's interview with a vampire, vampire. <laughs> and then we'll get back to, <laughs> Oh gosh, they wouldn't dare. All right. Well, all right. Well, that was it for news ratings and info LT. You want to tell people how to interact with us? I shall. Uh, we want to encourage you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Walking Dead TTM. To submit your theories and feedback, most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Walking Dead TTM. 
you can send us an email. That's walkingdead at talkthroughmedia.com. You can also use our feedback form on the webpage. That's at talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback. If you'd like to leave us voicemail, remember you can call 216-232-6146. And all of our new episodes are on YouTube. Just search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when we have new videos. Those videos go out first before the podcast does. And to support us, like and review the Talk Through Media Facebook page. You can find that at facebook.com slash talkthroughmedia. And as always, the best way you can support us is in our Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash walkingdeadtalkthrough. And we would like to thank our Patreon supporters, Mike Rollo, Scott Kerr, Renee Murray, Dieta Patterson, that guy over there, Lawrence Todd, <laughs> Hello. and this guy, me, Kyle McAdams. Remember that Mike, Scott, Dieta, and Renee will be getting an early episode of a version of the episode this week. Uh, you can subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or your podcast client of choice. And while you're there, give us a rating or review. You can also leave us a review at podchaser.com. There you can actually rate individual episodes or the whole podcast. And as always, remember to share our posts on Facebook and Twitter when we post them or tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to get us new listeners. All right, Brian. So what else can we listen to on our network? Well, of course, um, Kim and James are working on the Rebinge Deep Space Nine podcast and have been going strong and are now talking season six of uh, Deep Space Nine. Hmm. So, you know, they, they've only got, after this season, they only got one season left. So they've been going on a, a real clip, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, they're already talking about uh, their next show, which is going to be, well, the, and they, of course they cover the, the show that they cover right now, in addition to Deep Space Nine is Star Trek Prodigy, which I love because it gives me a break. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, in all seriousness, uh, they do a great job with with Prodigy, so uh, it's good to see. And unlike the podcast that I do, they're actually on time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far as um, I, w- I was going to say, the next show that they're going to cover after, after Deep Space Nine is Voyager. So, mm-hmm. so they'll be covering... Uh, can't wait for them and, to cover the year in hell. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as the Star Trek podcasts, um, I finally got the season finale episode out um, this this past week for Strange New Worlds, where it was LT and me uh, having a, a very interesting conversation uh, about the show and uh, some thoughts about what's what we're going to see next season. Um, now that that's done, we will start releasing lower decks episodes. We've got three episodes that are recorded, uh, and need to be edited. And then we will have, uh, an episode for each, uh, five and six, seven and eight and nine and 10. So we'll just, we're just going to cover two episodes each, um, to, so we can catch back up. And then after that, we'll be doing uh, the rest of Picard that we haven't uh, released yet in preparation for February and Picard season three coming back. So, so we got a lot going on. Yep. And thankfully things have uh, settled down a little bit. It was a calm before the storm. (laughs) So I'm actually taking this week and trying to uh, catch up on my editing. So I hear that. Yep, you and me both. I'm hoping to get in some slower times because I'm having the same issue. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're recording this episode before the, you know, the next weeks that we're talking about. Anyways, it's just, it, you know, it is what it is. We'll get him out. Yep. All right. Well, that goes for next week. We'll be talking about The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 22, titled Faith. Written by Nicole Morante Matthews and Magali Lor- uh, Lorzano. Or is that Magali Lor- Lorzano? I don't know. Directed by Rose 
uh, Trochet and description on amcplus.com is Ezekiel and Negan plan a labor revolt. Eugene stands trial. Ooh. Yeah, that should be good. See how yeah, Yumiko and, choose. And yes, this is a good episode to, to discuss. I have seen it already. So. All right. Well, then until that time, I'm Kyle. And I'm LT. And I'm Brian. And this is The Walking Dead Talk Through. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.